would like to see more and better content on this channel, it only takes 30 seconds to support me on Patreon. Just follow the link down below, patreon.com slash amywildadventures. Stay wild! As you know, I'm Amy Wilde. Let's dive into part two of my Greek adventure. This village is called Varvara. This looks like a Caspian whip snake. Just joking. Unfortunately, I found this one passed away on the road. It's obviously been hit by a car, but it's a beautiful example to show you one of the amazing snakes of Greece. So like many of the snakes here, is a colubrid or a rear fang snake. Poor thing, so sad. So only very mildly dangerous, harmless to people. If you come zoom in, I can show you his teeth. So he does have some very tiny rows of teeth. Here's his little windpipe that he can breathe through, even while eating. Got teeny tiny rows of teeth through here. But his actual fangs, they're going to be right at the back in here. Can you see that at all under my fingernail? That's his little fang right back there. So for him to inject a human being with any kind of venom, even though the venom itself is very mild, he'd have to get that tiny tooth right at the back of his mouth into us. And that's why these rear fang snakes really are not considered dangerous. Very different, of course, to our Australian whip snakes. Not related at all. Our whip snakes are elapids, or front fang snakes, are a completely different class of reptile altogether. Poor thing, so sad, look at him. Unfortunately, summer is not at all a good time for reptiles in Greece. It's just too darn hot for them. So we're not finding as many as I'd like, but still, we are finding a few. This thing's absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, I'll at least put him off into some bush so he's not in the middle of the road. So any birds or other predators that try to eat him are not put at risk themselves. All right, let's do that and keep going. Aha, here is a family of white storks. Now, we all know the fable of storks delivering babies, right? Well, especially here, they represent more. Traditionally, they were believed to protect their elderly stork peers, even, according to Greek legend, plucking their own feathers to warm their aged peers. It was this belief that in fact sparked a law in Greece requiring citizens to take care of their elderly parents. It was even once punishable by death to kill a stork in Greece. What's the name of this town? I think Stagira. Stagira. Not good. Stahira. Stahila. Stahira. Hey. Stahira. Stahira. Hey. Ooh, do you see that? Yes! This is Lacerta viridis, aka the European Green Lizard. What a stunner! I've had my eye out for one of these since arriving. Now, if only to get him in hand, it's gonna be tricky. Nope, not happening. Oh well, onwards. We're continuing east, hoping to find some wilder forest to explore. This looks good. And hey, how's this caterpillar? This is a European species I've never come across before. He's known as Saturnia pyri, Aristotle's silkworm, or the great peacock moth caterpillar. I'm a little wary of those bristles since I haven't encountered these before, hence the stick. His moth form has the biggest wingspan in all of Europe, reaching 15 to 20 centimeters, and was famously painted by Vincent van Gogh, a truly stunning insect. I know it's actually not uncommon for locals to uh, harvest some of the weeds around here for their own salads and food. Not sure what's going on there. This one looks a lot like coriander, but it doesn't really smell like it, so I'll give this one a pass. If you've seen many of my previous episodes, you know I have a fascination with finding foreign fungi. It's just so squishy and different. What's that? Do you, do you hear that sound? Check it out. I can't believe this. It's my first proper look at a woodpecker in the wild. Certainly my first on camera. From what I can tell, this is a Eurasian Rhineck, Jinx Torquilla. Would you believe these birds are involved in witchcraft? Well, 
Their involvement may not be consensual, but turns out they can turn their heads clean around 180 degrees. And if you disturb one while it's protecting the nest, this ability will be combined with an uncanny display of hissing and snake-like head weaving. Ergo, back in the day, the bird was used as a charm to bring back disappearing lovers. Their genus name, Jinx, is the origin for our use of the word in the English language. I think I've more or less got the hang of driving on the right side of the road. It's a bit different. I have done it a few times over the years, but it's always something new to get used to. This isn't though. Really, just a goat version of remote rural driving in Oz. Unfortunately, we're almost at the end of this adventure, but I have been recommended one last place as a potential hotspot for reptiles. So let's see how we go. Ah, oh, these guys are old news now. Another home in Stortus, which we got well acquainted with in part one. This guy knows where he's going. Let's leave him to it. <laughs> what's under here. Ah, yes, this is the site every herper lives for. Now, can we reach him? Yes! Who's this then? Hello, buddy. This is an agama. Whoa! Haha, <laughs> he got me. He got me, buddy. This is Grease's single version of our much more diverse Aussie dragon lizards. Check out this little ninja! He's a young one full of life. So full in fact, I can neither get a clear shot of him nor catch him, but I dare say he is a Balkan frog, Pelophylax curtmulleri, or possibly, as we are just within their distribution, the exceptionally similar marsh frog, Pelophylax ridibundus. <laughs> ah, and he is a slightly older, more sedate individual. Gorgeous. Here, however, I've discovered lurks a much larger beast. It's a big, big old frog. He did not want to be caught, I tell you what. I actually missed him the first time I came around, so I went for a bit of a walkabout and indeed came back and found he'd come up for air again. From there I managed to ambush him. Unbelievably, this is the same of two species as those tiny guys I was previously struggling to wrangle, just much bigger and older. I mentioned earlier that he's one of two species. These are so similar, there's even those in the scientific community who think they should be considered the same. Doing a quick internet search myself, there does seem to be some peer-reviewed studies indicating both very subtle physical or morphological differences and differences between their calls too. I just straight up do not have the skills to tell them apart myself. How chunky are those legs? Alright, we won't leave him out of the water any longer though. Let's put him back. This place is great. I've already got countless frogs and that agamid too. Absolutely unreal. <sighs> Always pressed for time though. Gotta go. That's the capital city, Thessaloniki, ahead of us. I'm going to finish this Greek adventure with a secret little corner of stunning semi-rural wilderness right on the coast. love a golden hour orb weaver. We have orb weaver spiders in Australia, but I've never seen the European version. This would be the widespread lobed argio, argio plebata, and he's got a meal. I hope you've enjoyed discovering this corner of the world with me. As usual, we've only sampled a tiny bit of what Greece has to offer. I truly hope it's not too long before I'm back for another sequel. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for. I really hope you've enjoyed this incredible episode in Greece. Stay wild and I'll see you next time. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do help me by liking, subscribing and donating even a tiny amount via patreon.com. 